Hello and welcome to the Wendell Effect. My name is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician, and I'll be your guide through the markets uh, as I see it. And we'll go ahead and get started. But before we do, just to remind everybody, we're not broker dealers or investment advisors. Take a look at all this information from an educational standpoint. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold anything in particular, giving you any personalized recommendations. Uh, there is uh, always risk involved in the markets. Can't eliminate the risk. We just do what we can to minimize and manage the risk. And we're not subject to trading restrictions, so we can have a position in security and initiate one at any time. Please stay in touch with me. Please, please, please give me some feedback and let me know you're out there. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe and like the video. That'll also help me out. I appreciate it. Uh, basically, you can email me at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter at TraderBW. You can follow me there on a regular basis. I tweet pretty much every day about the markets, so you can get some good information there as well. And of course, I'll be producing more videos here on the Wendell Effect, so keep an eye out for that as well. So, jumping in for today, we're going to start off with our normal weekly view of the markets. We're going to do the equity index futures, following next with the energy futures. And then I'll dive into the sector analysis for stocks and finish it up with the Indian markets, as I usually do. So, kicking this off for the week of October 9th for the equity index futures, we've had the same pattern for a couple weeks. Rally for the first couple days of the week and then drop off for the last couple days. And this week doesn't look like it's going to be much different. I mean, last week we did make a higher high and a lower low, but overall the momentum is still pretty strong to the downside and we were met with tons of selling pressure that wiped out all the bullish, pre almost, almost all the bullish pressure from the prior days that week. So we might get a very similar pattern. Whoops, sorry, wrong way. You can see we had a retracement, about 38% retracement of the overall decline, and it looks as though we're impulsing to the downside again. We failed on the daily chart to get anywhere near 50, let alone 60 on the RSI. So there's a lot of bearish momentum still in place. Looks like we should continue to sell off, maybe reaching 34.47 by the end of the week. So that would be our first Fibonacci extension downwards. And looking at the four hour chart, I mean, this was kind of predictable, the change in the week. This is what you got to look for. If we start rounding again, you look to see if prices are making new highs, but doing it with less momentum, that's called a negative divergence. And that's probably one of the best signals you'll ever get on any indicator that it lets you know that the momentum just isn't there to continue the trend. So it usually precedes a drop, and that's exactly what happened. We sold off and eventually just dropped completely back into bearish territory. So if we do get any kind of a rally, 37.45 to 37.70 could act as a nice little resistance level to push us back down again. I don't expect to get a very big bounce off this demand that we have at 36.32. Ultimately, as I said, we should get down to the 34.50s by the end of the week, if not even lower to 33.06. So we were looking at the, the markets that were leading us, and you can see the S&P is not a leader to the downside. It's number two. Uh, the first and the main leader to the downside right now has been the NASDAQ. So we want to pay attention to what the NASDAQ is doing because that's going to lead the other markets. And if the NASDAQ bounces, that's when we can expect the other bounces with the other indexes. The Dow, by the way, has been the strongest index trying to hold up. So looking at the NASDAQ, you see we made that fresh low. And we actually did that new low with less momentum on the weekly chart. So that is actually suggesting that there could be a rally at some point. It's not going to change the trend, though. This is a weekly chart. We might rally up into 12,000, but that'd be about it before we go lower. Ultimately, I mean, we're bouncing right now at a Fibonacci extension. The next target would be 9540. And then we've got basically 8800 as our next really strong demand zone to get a serious bounce. But other than that, any kind of rallies are going to be met with more selling pressure. On the daily chart, pretty much the same thing we saw on the S&P. This actually is weaker. We couldn't quite get up to the supply before we started selling off on Thursday and Friday. So the NASDAQ is looking like it wants to continue to move down towards that 10,000 area before we get any kind of a, a bounce again. It's our next FIB extension. On the four hour chart, if we do rally a little bit, this would be a great shorting opportunity right around 11,500 to target. And you can see we bounce off a four hour demand but we're likely to continue down and touch the next zone, which is 10,621. However, if there is a bounce, I'm going to look to short that 11,500 and target the 10,600 as a, the end of the trade. On the Dow, oh, what happened there? 
Uh, on the Dow, we did actually move up a little bit into that supply and started pushing down. Remember, the Dow is a little bit stronger than the other markets, but overall still moving down. And we've got 28,500 basically for the target for this week on the downside. On the four hour chart, pretty much all the same thing. You can see there's a little bit of supply here at 30,000. If we do rally, that's what I would expect to see us turn back to the downside, targeting 28,890 to 28,500 basically. So do expect things to get more bearish this week, a little bit stronger to the downside. Finally, the Russell, we had done a nice rally into supply on the weekly. We're retesting a demand zone for the second time. We do have a lot less momentum than we did previously. So that's suggesting a little bit of a bounce, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to happen this week. So I expect that we're gonna to continue to make some new lows this week before we get any kind of rally. And you can see the lots of bearish pressure on the daily chart. That should push us down towards 1564 by the end of the week. So again, I'm just expecting more of the continuation of the bearish trend. And on the four hour time frame, all pretty much the same. You can see we tried to rally on the four hour, couldn't get above 60 on the RSI. And that was after a negative divergence. That's why we started dropping like the way we did. And it looks like it's gonna to continue to be pretty bearish. So we have a possible bounce coming at 1686. <clears throat> but that's a, that'll be just a small bounce to get you short again. And then our next target will be 1619, ultimately 1513. So that's what I'm seeing on the equity markets. We're going to take a shift over to the energy markets and see what's going on there. On the crude oil, we had a pretty big rally. You notice we had selling pressure as we came into the weekly demand zones. We overshot the first one that I've been watching, and we ended up hitting this little rally base rally. That indecision two weeks ago was telling us, you know, there's a pause in the move. We need to, you know, be aware that this could pull back, and it did. Now, as we pulled back, we just did a 50% retracement of our most recent move down. However, we still haven't broken 60 on the RSI. So if we turn around here, expect new lows to be made, not this week, okay? It's not gonna go down that fast, but within the next two weeks or three weeks, we should see new lows and possibly push down towards the $68 range uh, on the oil. So it depends. If we get enough momentum that we can actually continue to go up and we break above 60, then we're likely to move up into the $100 range before we start stalling. So it could go either way. We got this bounce that we're in right now. We just have to see how much momentum it has and if it's gonna continue. Looking at the smaller picture here on the daily chart, you can see that we had a lot of move to the upside. We actually had this, uh, what I call novice candle. And actually, if you uh, take a look and do a search for the Wendell Effect Chart School, I actually did a whole video session about 13, 15 minutes long on novice candles and how to trade those. So we have a novice candle here where you've got a large candle in the same direction already traveling on that crude oil. As a matter of fact, let me go out to the daily chart on crude. There we are. And I want to bring in, I think I can just do it this way, volume. There we are. And I brought that in because I wanted to take a look. This is a daily chart, not the four hour, so it doesn't matter. But what I wanted to see, yep, and confirm, is that this is likely to be a novice candle. Part of the reason why is you take a look at the volume spike that you had on that last candle. So we get a large range candle in the same direction we're already traveling, a spike in volume, and it's often when you're breaking out to new highs. Well, there it is, the breakout to new highs. So you got all the pieces there. That's suggesting we should get a retracement back to the beginning of that candle at the very least. So expect the prices to pull back to 88.93, which is the beginning of that candle. And I think on the four hour chart, there was also demand there as well. Yes, 88.93 to 88. So that'd be a great long opportunity to target the 95.70 or even 100.84 if we're not done with this rally. So we just gotta keep an eye on this. If we pull back to that area of demand, again, the long opportunity be 88.93. The stop loss, oops, got the wrong button there. Let's try this. There we are, stop loss, let me fix that. And that'll be about 87.90 something. Depends on where you wanna place the stop. But it could be about 87, I'll do 85. 
thereabouts. There you go. And basically, like I said, you're going to be targeting this 9570, but we need the RSI to stay above 40. If it for some reason drops very quickly, I don't think it'll happen, but if the RSI does go below 40, then you would definitely not go long here because it shows too much bearish momentum and we'd continue to go lower. So that's a possible trade opportunity for, oops, there we go, crude oil. And on the four hour chart, pretty much see the same thing. Lots of novices jumping in late, likely to pull back, but not necessarily reverse trend. We have the 88.93 showing here for a possible long up to at least 95.70 area. So look for a possible long this week on crude oil in the beginning of the week. On that gas, we have this big double top formation that's trying to form. We even had a head and shoulders here. We didn't make the measured move yet on the head and shoulders for NAC gas. We're definitely trying to, and you can see we pulled back just a little bit. It looks like we're getting ready to continue our march downwards. But you got to be careful. If we make a new low in price, you also need to make a new low in the indicator. Otherwise, we're going to get a good bounce. So keep an eye out for that. On the four hour chart, you can see that we are trying to push lower again. We bounce off this demand zone at 6.320. We'll probably go a little deeper into the zone before it bounce, but it looks like we should continue to push to the downside and make those fresh lows on the daily and yet and then eventually the weekly chart. So keep an eye out for those bearish entry opportunities. Okay. On the gasoline, this kind of followed what happened with crude oil, where we got that big move up this week broke out of the prior highs and you saw we had indecision i thought this was going to continue to go to the downside so i was a little surprised to see the break to the upside though looking at the daily chart we are retracing off those lows we still have room to go you know, the uh, good target for an entry for sure would be the 61.8 percent retracement of the overall downward move it also happens to line up with the, the supply and was at 2.9368 to 3.0584 so that would be a good entry point to continue to short gasoline. First target, 2.4577. On the four hour chart, nothing really there. Just have those demand zones below, the supply way up there at three bucks. So just be patient, wait for the right opportunities and then get in as long as the momentum's on your side. We are diverging where we're making new highs, but doing it with less momentum, and that's not likely to continue. So we should get a drop here pretty soon. Next, heating oil, or sorry, yeah, heating oil, we had that big spike as well. We actually broke out of prior highs. You can see that we never got below 40 on the RSI. So that shows there's just not enough bearish momentum to continue down. You know, we tried to make a new low and just couldn't sustain it, so we rallied. And there was a big divergence on the daily chart. This is what I was talking about, where you have new lows, but you do it with less momentum, and therefore it doesn't hold and you get a big bounce. So this looks like it wants to continue. However, after a parabolic move, you go almost straight up, you should get some sort of a pullback first. And this has actually become a demand area, you know, rally, base, base, rally. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us pull back to a three and a quarter area and bounce from that area. Oops. So we're gonna move over into the equities again and stay with the sector performance. Overall, for the month, or actually last six months is what we're looking at here, pretty much everything's been bearish except for the energy sector again. So, you know, you're seeing a little bit of outperformance in the safety sectors as staples, healthcare, and utilities are doing a little better than their counterparts. But for some reason, inflation is still a problem and energy is very high. You go to the last week and you can see that it spiked. We had a big jump in the energy and you saw what happened with crude oil and heating oil, obviously. So that's what happened with the prices of those securities are related to that. Looking at the map of the market, this has been for the past week, you can see again, the energy market was very, very hot and it looks like it might continue to do so. Real estate is cooling off quite a bit and so is utilities. And if you just look at the last day on Friday, pretty much everything was collapsing. So what goes up will come down in a bear market. So Thursday and Friday were extremely bearish. We did have a little bit here in Lockheed Martin. I'm not sure what NOC and LHX is, I forget. But that was it. For the most part, pretty right across the board. So I expect more of this to happen. So looking at the sector ETFs, we'll start off with the XLY, our consumer discretionary. And you can see we had a little bit of a bounce and we're continuing our move down, trying to make fresh lows and target those Fibonacci extensions, okay? 
Hopefully you don't hear too much screeching in the background. Those are the local parrots. <laughs> South Florida, we got like, I don't know, 25 or 30 parrots that live in the wild out here. And they get a little noisy sometimes. Anyway, so it looks like this is going to continue. Don't have a great entry spot here for anything. The, uh, the only thing that might happen is a little bit of a bounce because as we're making new lows in price, we're failing to do that on the momentum indicator, the RSI. And that could lead to a little bounce before we go lower. As a matter of fact, on the XLY, there could be a shorting opportunity. I think this is one we looked at earlier. Oh, this was the one we looked at earlier. Yeah, so I was looking at doing a short here at the beginning of October. Unfortunately, I believe this one didn't pan out. As you can see, we ended up gapping up into the zone, and we had too much bullish momentum. You see, the RSI was already above 60 when we gapped up into the supply zone. So typically, if the RSI is above 60 when you hit supply, supply is a lie. It will not hold, you don't short. Okay, same thing happens with 40 in demand. If you have too much momentum, you're gonna break through. So that's showing too much bullish momentum to hold supply, too much bearish momentum will break demand. Simple, that's it. So unfortunately, that didn't work out. It does look like we're gonna to continue to move down. One of the stocks in that sector, booking.com, or booking holdings, is on it was on its way down and close to target two and you can see we had a little pullback with that but this week it looks like it's going to push down and hit target two you might have already been stopped out though if you moved your stop above the high but it should continue to move down and hit the target soon if you're still in xlc the communication sector also looking pretty weak we started going into a bit of sideways action here we had a little bit of bullish momentum but wednesday and thursday were sideways with friday gapping and running to the downside so it looks like we're going to continue to move down to the next target of 44.68 this week. The technology sector also looking pretty bearish. You can see we did our retracement right here. And it's interesting because with both these last impulses, we have an overlap with our next target right around 115 area. And you can see 115.36, 114.69. So somewhere in that area is where we're likely to get our next bounce. So I don't really have anything on this to be able to short. You know, if we go into the technology sector, XLK, and look at smaller time frames, I'm gonna get rid of this volume. There we go. I'm on the four hour here. You can see there's nothing there to short. And if I go into the 60 minute, I don't really see anything there either. So one of the things we can do is take a look to see is there anything we can actually short in that sector? And one of the ways of looking at this is for the seasonal moves. And I've done this before with Season X. If you need a discount code, uh, if you're interested in subscribing, let me know. But if I go into the screener, I can search and see on, let's see, sectors. Well, they have information technology. They don't have the technology sector. And I can look for the 10th of October for the last 15 years bearish trades and we want high probabilities I'm looking at 80% wins or more doesn't look like we have anything oh we got one right here IBM looks a little bearish that's the only thing that showed up so let's see I think I put that one in as a trade yep IBM on the daily chart you can see we retraced already and hit a nice little daily supply zone and we're coming up close to earnings but before the earnings come out by the way, you don't want to be in a trade going into earnings unless you're really confident on the trend because it could shock and change direction very easily on the news. So on a smaller time frame, I would look to see if we can continue the bearish trend and short IBM. Well, looking at the daily chart, again, this was, uh, sorry, that's daily. This is the one hour chart. That should have been changed. It's a one hour chart. We do have a drop base base drop supply zone at 122.10 to 122.67, stop loss around 123, and you can target all the way down to 114.08, basically. So looking at a pretty good opportunity here. There's a possibility that we stall out the 120 area as well, so maybe you could use that little drop base drop zone as well. Let's go to IBM for the chart just to see exactly. If we go down the 60 minute time frame, and I'm on, and again, this is what I was looking at for a possible zone. Let's see if this one works as well. We've got a low of 119.59, close here, 61. So that closes inside, which means we got two zones right there. 
So if you wanted to, you could possibly trade that as well, which basically, I'm going to combine the two like this. A little bit more risk, but a better opportunity potentially. And clone that. So there we are. So you got 119.39 to about 120.35 with the stock at 120.50, targeting this 114 area. You always want to get out before you hit that zone where everybody else is exiting. And that's it. So we'll see if we get that opportunity on IBM this week. XLI for the industrials, pretty much the same picture. We had a pullback already, moving down again, and we're looking pretty bearish. So XLI on the 60-minute chart gives us a possible short. You've got a drop base and then the drop, so we've got some good follow-through. If we can rally to 83.68, we should be well below 60 on the RSI. Actually want to be below 50 for this one. But if we can rally up into that area and stay below 50 on the RSI, there's no bullish momentum. We should drop nicely. Stop loss goes at about 84.10 with target one being 81.26 and target two 78.40. On the XLI 60 minute, let's see, that was, oh, that was the old one. I'm sorry, this is the old trade. Unfortunately, I don't think it worked out, did it? 88, 83, no, we ended up rallying on that one. So, sorry, I was looking at the wrong week there. This is what ended up happening. We ended up moving to the upside, never got up to into this, or past the supply, didn't we? 83, yeah, we ended up turning around, and now we're, yeah, it broke right through. That's what happened, that's where it is. So it broke right through that. You can see we ended up gapping up and going through. So that was a loss, unfortunately. Ended up hitting the higher time frame supply zone instead on the daily time frame. Next, we have building materials. So you can see pretty much the same picture. We have this big move down, we're tracing it back, we're continuing down yet again. And don't really have a trade there. On the energy market, we're coming back up into our supply zone again, but we have a lot of momentum. Previously, when we came up to this area, we were below 60 on the RSI, and you can see we dropped. Now as we come up, we're, we've got more momentum. So if anything, I'm only looking at a retracement down. But you can see the 78.6 is also a nice little rally base, rally demand zone. That could be a good target. It's a pretty good move down. I don't know if there's anywhere to short though yet. But that would be where I'd continue the upward trend if it's going to. Unfortunately, nothing else really there. I mean, if you wanted to short this tested zone, that's a bit risky. So I'd probably just leave that alone. On Devon Energy, this is a possibility for the same thing, a pullback to that area as demand is 61.65 to 59.41 for a long opportunity. That's about all I got on the daily chart. So you gotta be patient, wait for the pullback. Intraday, there may be some sort of a shorting opportunity, but it doesn't really look it because here on the four hour, there's another demand. So we may not make it all the way down to 61.65, we might bounce at 67.95 to 69.08. So look for that pullback on Devon Energy. This has been a strong sector. We could bounce targeting 78. We'll see if that happens. Consumer staples is unusually bearish, usually during a bear market. This has been the safety valve, but it hasn't really worked. We're continuing to push down. We're very close to a possible bounce here at 66, and then our next target would be 64, basically but don't have a great opportunity, just gonna wait on this one. Healthcare also did the same pattern where we had that big move down, bounce, and are now continuing the moves down, not nearly at the targets yet, and I would actually look at the 117 and a quarter as a better target. Problem is, you gotta find a place to short. If I go to the XLV, say on a 60 minute chart, well, we have nothing here as far as a good zone. I go to the four hour, still nothing really. So where do you short? That's the problem. There's not really a good entry spot. Maybe I have to go into intraday opportunities and look there on the 15 minute. And let's see, we got a low right here of 122.88. Close is the same. So you can look at that as a possibility. Drop base, drop area supply, 122.74, 122.99. And let's see where we'd be targeting. Well, we got that 120.53. Not sure there's anything else in between. I go to, whoops, wrong button, sorry. I go to 60 minute time frame. 
Yeah, that'd be about it. Just targeting the 120.53 if you go short at 122.74. Let's see. Yeah, that's it for the 60 minute. Oh, this is on healthcare? No, that was previously what I was looking at for short. So this is the new short we just looked at. You can see that this one is just pushing down. Anyway, the utility market also did hit our entry. Uh, for those of you who were looking at this last week with me, we were looking at it bouncing up. And you can see on, uh, this is where we were. We were actually on um, Friday of last week looking at that bounce of a demand zone. However, we were way below 40 on the RSI. So you can see this week we made new lows. And there it is, Monday, Tuesday, we hit our entry, which was the supply. And hopefully it got short because Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're getting rewarded. We're almost at target number one, and we should be able to reach target two, which is that weekly demand zone. So if you're short, stay short. Just adjust your, your stop loss. This is working out pretty well. On the four-hour chart, you can pretty much see we were also looking pretty much the same trade. Uh, if we bounce, there may be a new opportunity to get short here. Let me show you on the XLU. Four hour time frame right here we have pretty much that rally or sorry drop base drop 67.21 67.87 you see a good selling pressure coming out of that and again we're almost out of first target so we might get a little balance especially because at this first target we also have a little bit of divergence where prices are trying to make new lows the indicator however eh, not doing it so we might get a little bounce, and that would be a great shorting opportunity, 67.21 to 87. Let me see. Yeah, that's 87, so there we go, 68.06. Target number one would be the 63.16. And then target two, you want to get out before we hit this demand right here. So that'd be target two, right around, we'll call it 6096, that's, that's fine. And that's it. All right, moving along, we have, oh, first energy is a possible shorting opportunity. And basically on the bigger time frame, you pretty much see we're hitting demand right now, but we're very weak, so we should be able to go down after we get a little bounce. So the shorting opportunity is way down the 60 minute chart for first energy, FE is a symbol. Pretty much what we just saw on the XLE, right? We wanna wait for a bounce up into the supply, 36.55 to 36.75, stop loss goes above at about 36.90, target one, 34.56, and target two, 33.33. Pretty straightforward there. And now we have the financials same pattern we have this move down we're getting a bounce we're moving down again i just didn't have a good entry and finally real estate same thing this is a little bit weaker you can see that we didn't make a new low on financials but we made a fresh low here on the real estate so this is collapsing it'll take the financials with it as soon as the interest rates really start hitting higher uh, once we get a lot more bearishness in those interest rates you'll see the financials really start to sag unfortunately i didn't have a good entry for a short but we'll keep an eye out for that for next week on the real estate, I have Well Tower as a possible shorting opportunity. W E L L is the symbol. And you can see we've got really it's kind of rally, base, and drop with follow through 6340 with a stop at 6650. Target one, 5605. And target two, 4970. So looking for that to do a little retracement. Still a very, very strong downtrend. So it should continue to come down after it hits supply. That's it. So, actually, we're skipping that. We had a special guest last week. Uh, might as well put this out there again. Hopefully, you are interested in joining me in Dallas. I do have that live event still available if you want to enroll. HTTPS forward slash forward slash MTM event live dot com forward slash B dub. You can sign up for that event. And all right, so that'll be on the 20th and 21st of October. So coming up pretty quickly. And another event is a day in the life of an online trader. I'm gonna invite you to that one as well. That'll be in New York in Long Island. That's actually gonna be the week after October 27th. So I'll be on the road quite a bit. If you're interested in joining me for that event, you can click that link or actually to put uh, copy that and put it in your browser. It is 
HTTPS, WealthBuildersHQ.com, a day in the life of an online trader live order form. Whew. So lots to fill out there, but if you go ahead and join that, or you can also message me or email me at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. I'll go ahead and give you the info for that as well and send you the link if you're interested. But uh, you can join me there for a full day from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. We're going to be do doing trading, basically a live trading event where I'll talk about the markets and what's going on in those markets, sharing a lot of secrets and things that I do for myself to basically show you a lot of the secrets and things I've never shared before. So it'll be some brand new stuff that nobody's ever seen. I'll give you that opportunity to hopefully give you an edge when it comes to your trading. So I'd like to see you there. If you're interested, let me know and I'll talk to you then in either Dallas or New York. So moving along here for the week of October 9th, we're gonna wrap this up with the Indian markets and take a look at those markets for us. Starting off, taking a look at the last week, you can see that it was a little mixed, mostly green though. We had a few outstanding reds there with Hindustan Unilever, Adenent, and Asia Paint. But other than that, everything else is either sideways or green. And when we take a look at the Nifty, you can see on the weekly chart, we finished with the bullish candle. We made a higher low and a higher high, and we may be done retracing that move that we had. We had that move up on the weekly chart, and then retrace back a little bit, we might be done at that 38% retracement. So uh, we still are having trouble breaking above 60 though. So we need to get more momentum if we're gonna go higher. And if we don't, if we end up getting another week where we can't get above 60 on the RSI, then I would expect us to collapse down towards this demand zone at about 16,248. On the daily chart, a little more detail, you see we rallied up and definitely showing more weakness. So this is not very bullish. We may end up stalling out and may not make a new high. I mean, we've got lower highs starting to form. We need a lower low for a bearish trend, but that may be on the horizon. We're just not getting a lot of movement upwards. On the four hour, same problem, not enough momentum to get up to supply. So we may start to drift a bit lower. It doesn't look like we're gonna slam down quickly. It looks more like we're just gonna drift with maybe light volume and not much going on there. So looking at the individual securities, Reliance has done kind of a weak retracement. We had a pretty good move down to fresh lows. We've only retraced 38% and Reliance looks like it's gonna drag the markets lower. Since obviously it's the biggest component, it looks as though we're gonna, you know, we don't have much bullish momentum, so we should end up pushing down at least to 2246, most likely, not this week, but next week. But we will see a lot of selling pressure this week on Reliance. You know, you take a look at Reliance, it's kind of interesting. In the last 15 years, from October 9th, what is this, 6th and 9th? No, no, 9th to the 14th. So for this week, historically, Reliance has gone up. Okay, you can see 86% over the last 15 years. 13 gains, two losses, right? So here I am talking about it going down, but this week it might actually go sideways to up a little bit before it drops. And you can see on the chart, it has that move up. And then the week after, look at that. Big move to the downside. It's only going up 33% of the time. So five gains, 10 losses. That's going to be the big drop. It might not be this week, but it is coming pretty soon. And I do see us getting down to that demand zone I mentioned at 2246. So maybe it starts off this week at the end of the week, but definitely by next week, we should see some selling pressure. And that's what I'm seeing on Reliance. On Infosys, almost the same picture. We got earnings coming out. That could be a catalyst for more movement as well, right? You see that earning calendar coming up. And we've also had to move up on Infosys to about 50% retracement, but we're stalling out in this area. HDFC retraced a little bit deeper to 61.8% and is now starting its new move down for the impulse. Again, earnings are coming up pretty soon on a lot of these securities, so be careful. You know, we might not want to hold into those earnings or have a tight stop in case. So I'm expecting more lows to be made pretty soon. In Bajaj Financial Services, we got, again, a weak retracement. Looks like we couldn't get above 60 here at all, so we should see some new lows being put in pretty soon. And that's going to drag the nifty down, obviously, with those big heavyweights playing that way. Going over to the bank nifty, well, we had a little bit more bullish pressure this week. Same thing you saw on the nifty for the most part, but we don't have a lot of momentum building yet. On the nifty bank daily chart, we are on a right shoulder. We've already made left shoulder, big head, and a right shoulder, 
and we may get that breakdown at about 37,000. That takes us down to 3,400 or 34,000. So we'll see if that ends up breaking us down. Obviously, it's not going to happen right away, but this week could continue to be bearish and push us down towards that neckline. On the four hour chart, pretty much the same thing. You see, we're kind of rolling over, close this gap, but that's about all we got out of it. And again, we can't get above 60, so I see more bearishness in the bank nifty or nifty bank to push us lower. I think we're looking at, yeah, ICICI bank, believe it or not. That's one of the shining stars. You can see historically from the 9th of October for the next month, really, 85% of the time, this has gone up on an average return of about eight and a third percent. So that may try to hold up the nifty bank for a little while, but that's the, really the only stock that looks like it might try to go to the upside. And when you look at the charts, yeah, we might have a small opportunity here. I'm not gonna take a big daily chart opportunity because it, for the most part, didn't look that good. But on smaller 60 minute time frame, there could be a nice buy opportunity, 870.55, 8.63, with a stop at 8.63.20, and target 9.02 and a quarter. So that's what I've got so far. Uh, a little bit choppy, honestly, is what I'm seeing coming up in these markets. So be careful. If you got any questions, again, please let me know. You can reach me at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can also catch me on Twitter at Trader B-Dub. Be careful. There's some people out there trying to imitate me. Make sure you take a look at the actual name to make sure it's correct. And I would love it if you would subscribe and also like the video. It helps me out a lot as well. So if you enjoy what you've been seeing here and want more of it, please do both. Subscribe and like the video. Until next time, trade safe, trade well, and take care, everyone. See you soon.